better tools to achieve that you know, target holy grail that we hope you. And one tool I've used in my practice, I think really is indispensable, is the eye trace. Right? It's the only amperometer that does forward ray tracing. In other words, it tries 256 points into the eye and says, okay, how does it land on the eye, the quality of the image, but also where does it land? And so it gives us information on higher order aberration, contrast sensitivity, it tells us more scatter plot of, of opacity, it gives us a refraction, and because it has a topographer built in, it can separate and give us the contribution of the cornea and internal optics. So for me, you know, when I'm even planning any kind of cataract surgery, this is an indispensable tool. But what's really cool about it for actually toric IOLs and alignment is it has a couple different features. Number one, it has wave front case, which I think is really important we'll talk about. It also has ability to have some help with marking and orientation intraoperatively. But to me, which is the holy grail for me, because I'm not as good as you all out there on the panel. And so sometimes I have some misses, and you get that surprised patient who's not happy. It helps you a great deal of understanding how to manage these patients if you're not happy postoperatively, or if they're not happy postop. So we all get frustrated. I know I do. When you have your eye wall mask, your lens star saying one thing, you've got your topographer saying something else, you got your auto refraction, you got your manifest refraction, you're like, what the heck do I do now? And then what's nice about the eye trace is that it has uh, wavefront keratometry. So it's not just taking individual points, it's taking the whole wavefront of the four millimeter central uh, cornea and using Zernike uh, mathematical formulas, it can actually give you, I think, a true understanding of the case of, of the eye. And so if you hear an example of the same patient with a sim case or with a diopter off of your wavefront case, and that, can, that can make a big issue when you're trying to plan and really target your IOL power. Uh, and, and what's also nice, Dr. Osher was instrumental in this using the Osher ring. So if you don't have an Aura, you don't have a Callisto or a Holos or a Varian, which are great tools, um, you have an ability at least to mark and give yourself the access for your IOL uh, based upon limbal marking. So we can take that with you to the OR and help identify those limbal, limbal markings to align your IOL correctly. So it's a nice little tool that I think has been useful. Uh, but to me, which would I love, and I think it's just kind of saved me in some cases, I'm gonna share with you a few cases, is what happens if you have that patient in the room and is pissed off at you, and you're like, oh man, what do I do? I don't wanna dilate the patient, have to sit there and find out where the IOL is. I can actually do a 30 second scan, find out without dilating the patient, am I on access, how is the power, and what do I have to do next? So here's an example of a patient where we're pretty much on the, the axis is perfect, there's your I IOL, there's a target, and you're pretty much on the same axis, you're perfect, but the problem is you are off on your power. So it tells you, don't rotate this. This is someone who may need, need an LRI or some type of enhancement. Here's another patient where you have about an eight degree rotation issue. But even if you rotate, it's telling you, you're only gonna get about a quarter diopter of help. So this is another patient where you're off with your power. So this is not a patient where you go back and rotate. This may be someone you need to do an LRI or some type of refractive enhancement. So it's important for those issues of when you're planning what to do. Here's an example of a patient where we are off with our alignment. So the toric axis here is about 25 degrees away from what the target should be. You should be at 85 and you're, you're way off. So it's telling you, if you rotate this 25 degrees, you will get 3.72 diopters of cylinder power correction. And it tells you your predicted post-op rotational refraction. So you can go into a patient's room and say, look, Mrs. Smith, I'm really sorry, I know you're not happy, but I'm gonna do this, this, and this. I know for sure we're gonna be on target and be very happy again. So it really helps with that insecurity when you go into that patient's room. Here's another example of a patient where you're about 14 degrees off. But this is a patient who may be happy. If you look at the refraction, the pre-op or the tracing refraction is actually not too bad. This is a patient who may be 20, 25 in your office. So if they're happy, you kind of leave it alone. But if they're not happy, at least you know, if you rotate 14 degrees, it'll be about 1.3 diopters of, of effect, and you'll probably have a good post-op refraction that's down below. So you would kind of have a better understanding, should I or can I help this patient if they're not happy? Now here's another example, just a couple more that also shows a situation where here's a patient where you have a, a 17 degree rotational issue, but you're also off about a diopter in your sill and you're actually more powerful in your lens than you are in your cornea. So if you rotate that, it's gonna give you about a diopter of change. But if you look at the post-op refraction, you're still gonna leave yourself about a diopter of sill left over. So this is a patient you have to tell them, I can rotate that lens, but I'm still gonna be off and give you, still have residual amount of astigmatism. So you can plan accordingly. So here's an example of a patient where we actually did do a rotation. So up on the left, it says, you need to rotate this, pretty far off obviously, 51 degrees, and you'll get about a diopter of correction, and you'll get basically plano. So what happens? Rotate the lens. And post-op on the right, you see a post-op tracy scan, showing you that you basically nailed it. 
So this is a great way to verify that the trace he was on, and by listening to the machine, you actually got the patient uh, pretty much plano. So for me, I've used it really for a lot of things. I think as a, as a pre-op planner, uh, it tells you where your angle alpha, angle kappa is. It gives you understanding of your corneal hyoid aberrations. So if for some reason you have a lot of HOA on the cornea, I'm not gonna implant a multifocal. I'll put a, a crystal lens or a monofocal lens in there. So it gives you a lot more ability to really plan accordingly. So it's, uh, it's a great machine. And by the way, I have no financial interest in nitrous. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. And, uh,